we hear much of Australian agriculture's bright future in helping to feed and clothe a growing global population. But for all the hype, corporate investors have been reticent to invest in rural land. Five years ago, Macquarie Bank set up Paraway Pastoral and bought up a swathe of large-scale sheep and cattle enterprises. While its property portfolio includes some of the nation's most famous merino studs, it's on a quest to breed even more productive and profitable sheep. It's Judgment Day at Pujanook Station, a famous name in the world of merino sheep. Every ram in the latest mature batch of stud animals is being carefully scrutinised, evaluated and graded. It's an intensive, exhaustive process, combining computer software and human brain power. My job is to breed stud rams for sale and provide genetics that can survive and, and thrive in these varying conditions because really they replicated across a lot of Australia's climatic zones. Pujanook Station near Gerildry in southern New South Wales lies in the heart of the Riverina, renowned Merino country. The vast plains suit large frame sheep that grow medium fine wool and heavy fleeces. Pujanook's hallmark is its fine bloodlines that stem from a century of meticulous breeding. These rams that have come into what we call Pen 1 are basically on the shortlist to be a worker on Pujanook. They've got to get through another two or three reviews, but at this stage they look pretty smart in that pen. The term worker may not seem to confer special status, but it means that from these chosen few will come the rams that will sire and stamp their genetic merits on the next generation of elite sheep. The rigorous scientific approach should ensure that those lambs will be incrementally better than their parents. The modern merino needs to be able to produce a saleable meat carcass, preferably at 12 months of age, of the male portion, and they also need to produce a fibre that is in demand. So we need a productive wool fibre, so in other words, micron, wool cut. We need growth for the carcass. We need it to happen in an earlier maturing sheep than they used to be. I guess we're looking for a high hind quarter, and you can see this bloke goes uphill, and he's actually showing a lot of a lot of muscle and a lot of meat in his hind quarter, which is very, very desirable. Pujanook Station comprises 20,000 hectares, a mix of saltbush country of mostly native perennials. It's at the edge of the Murrumbidgee Irrigation District, so its water entitlement is more than useful during dry spells. We actually predominantly use the native pastures and broad acre country to breed our sheep and we use the irrigation with fodder crops, fodder crops of pasture or fodder crops of grazing wheat crops to fill in those gaps in the autumn or in the seedy times in the spring. So it is a balancing act but we try to make it all work so that we can maximise our profitability and our genetic gain. Profitability and genetic gain are foremost in the minds of most merino producers. Margins for wool growers have remained tight for more than two decades, so most look to grow dual-purpose sheep. Pujanook annually produces about 1,800 rams. It's what the industry calls a leading parent stud. There are three avenues for our sale sheep. One is to the butcher, one would be to the restocker, and the other one is a wool-producing animal until it ends up being at the butcher at the other end. Pujanook Station is also part of a larger corporation. It was the first major property bought by Paraway Pastoral, now one of Australia's largest rural enterprises. Paraway is the operating company of the Macquarie Pastoral Fund. The fund was established in 2007 to allow investors to gain exposure to Australian agriculture and the red meat sector in particular. So Paraway operates 17 stations across 3.6 million hectares. So we run approximately 200,000 head of cattle and 200,000 head of sheep. So we run Brahmin cattle in our northern Australian assets. We run Angus cattle in northern New South Wales. And we obviously have a big merino sheep business across northern and southern New South Wales. The timing for Macquarie Pastoral Fund's foray into agriculture was exquisite. When Clyde Agriculture and Twynham Pastoral, another corporate, 
decided to sell off their pastoral properties, Macquarie leapt at the chance to buy some of the nation's best rural real estate. Those sort of large-scale assets can often be held by individuals or families for, for decades or, or even centuries at a time. So to have those quality properties of the scale that we wanted to acquire to come onto the market at the same time as we'd completed our fundraising was, was very fortunate, but we obviously went forward and were able to acquire those properties and they're obviously a key strength in our portfolio going forward. David Taylor and his family sold the property to Paraway five years ago, but David has stayed on as the sheep classer. The stud had long been an industry leader, but corporate ownership has injected new life into it. It's been fantastic to see Paraway putting so much money into the genetics here, which is paying off. It, it is leading us in a new direction, but I think it's probably refining the old, if I may say so, without getting off the beaten track of the goals and objectives that my family ha had for three generations. The sheepyards are new. Every animal wears electronic ear tag ID and the latest data collecting technology allows an affordable means of compiling detailed information about every sheep on an unprecedented scale. From birth, stud sheep are weighed and measured for growth rates and assessed for quality. All the data forms a breeding index. We're trying to use blood DNA and parentage on a large scale and it's, it has its challenging moments but it also has very exciting moments because Within our large genetic pool here at Pudgenook, we do have some extreme animals that are very productive. The breeding larger, faster maturing sheep can be detrimental to the quality of the wool. We want to maintain this nourishment that we have in our wool and this softness, beautiful deep crimp that we have here. So it's a bit of a juggle because body weight and body size sometimes acts in a different direction to a nice crimpy wool. Blue indicates that he's in the top 5% of this mob yielding weight is telling me that he's above the average when he was weighted 200 days. The greasy fleet weights tell me he's actually plus eight, so he's well over the average for wool cut, which is very, very important to us. We're trying to increase this type of nourished wool. So despite all the science, the keen eye of the sheep classer in visual assessment remains vital. You know, to get that nourishment in the poles is hard to get, and, and you've got it, so don't sell it. Yeah, yeah. You know when you're bringing in a sheep and they haven't had a feed for a while, you see that hollow, you get a little bit of hollow in on the stomach? And in the often secretive world of merino breeding, Pujanook has taken another bold step. It has begun to hold field days for its clients across southern Australia to help them understand how best to utilise all the data. I think also it's about bringing the latest research work and knowledge we've got about managing sheep to be more profitable. I think that's a terribly important thing for my business anyway, is that uh, we, we need to increase our profitability in the merino industry to continue to be a sustainable industry into the future. So today is about bringing that information out to our clients. And we've run four of these across New South Wales and Victoria. And why do people eat lamb? They eat lamb because it tastes good compared to our other competitors. And if we push that too far, you compromise the eating quality of the product and we lose one of our competitive advantages. Selecting on? On both you the know, genetic and nutrition side, we have really good scientific information for what you select on, what you manage the animal for, what the outcomes will be. And the real challenge is to enable a commercial farmer to improve their own game plan and deliver better results on their farm. And and it's translating science like Lifetime Wool that showed, you know, better nutrition of the ewe improves her and her progeny performance. And subtle differences can make big differences to outcomes, similar on the genetic side. Subtle differences for performance in given traits can make a big difference to the outcome in the paddock. So, back on the station, after some long, intensive days in the sheepyards, this year's crop of rams has been finally graded and sorted into five different divisions. The top pen, the elite animals being kept for breeding, will get the royal treatment. The next two grades will go to Pujanook's annual on-farm auction. Oh, gee. Right the corner, it, you know. This year, there were 250 rams on offer. 100 of them were pole merinos, 
reflecting the growing trend towards hornless sheep. And every sale lot was accompanied by its very own detailed production figures. But it was lot 10, a large framed horned animal with 19 micron wool that topped the sale. We paid 9,000 for him. We thought we might have had to go to 15,000 or better. Um, we've been buying rams here for uh, 14 years and without doubt this is the best sire that I've seen here to purchase. I try and buy a ram every year to use as sires within our own stud and this is without doubt the best sire that we've purchased here. I'm still a bit surprised that we actually got him to be honest with you. His wool's exceptional for, for a ram of his size. It's a very free growing wool and he's, he's just a very square sheep. Very, very good sheep. Poker 26, you missed the last one, don't miss it. Poker 26, what's that? I missed the last two. Well, have a go. Lower your respects, honey boy. Poker 26, under here. Poker 26, under one more. These rams will go to properties across southern Australia, and a good many are off to western Australia. The Nazari family, WA. Up to WA. Once, sheep breeders relied largely on the appearance of a sheep and the feel of its wool. Looks are still important but veteran auctioneer Kevin Norris has seen in recent years a rapid adoption of scientific measurements. And I think this applies to all uh, stud breeding, be it cattle or sheep. The technology behind the breeding today is being taken into account at a lot greater rate uh, and for a lot greater reasons than it did in the past. Specifics are starting to come into the breeding of rams and, and in beef cattle. It's another management tool that these stud masters are using to fine tune the top quality they're producing. You can't deny using science. I use it visual, subjective and objective. You've got to use the both. You know, whatever tools you can get. Yeah. But also, uh, with Paraway being a company ownership, the people in head office, they have to know where we started and where are we now. And where will we be in five years' time. Paraway's approach, naturally enough, has its critics and its sceptics. There's always strong opinions in the wool industry. What we can control and what we focus on is doing the right thing by our clients, improving our performance and improving the performance of our sheep, and we think if we continue to focus on that, then that will, that will serve our pathway forward in the industry. But most see Paraway's huge investment as a strong vote of confidence in the future of Marina production. When David sold to Macquarie Bank, I was a bit uncertain about his future. One huge thing in his favour, Macquarie Bank generally don't back losers. So the fact that they're in the industry is a huge plus for us. Uh, I think it is. I, th I think it's, if they've got that much confidence to invest the money they've invested, it's good for that. They're not in it for the short term. And that's quite true. The financial analysts and corporate bean counters believe that the bigger picture is a rosy one. I think they're looking at all the demand for these products. The rising affluence of the Asian consumer is a general view that they will want to acquire all these products, whether they be animal protein, wool, grain. So a lot of investors want to have exposure to that major structural change that's happening in the global economy. All the while, at Pujanook and across Paraguay's vast spread of holdings, the quest to produce a better sheep continues apace. At neighbouring Kewinbull Station, Paraguay's largest property in New South Wales, it's shearing time. These stud ewes are some of the 35,000 sheep that run on this 89,000 hectare spread. I've tried to concentrate on the things that I can control, and the two things I can control are my genetics and the way I actually manage the animals and look after the landscape. It's always going to be up and down with seasons. I think what the trick is to make sure that you make best use of the grass in the good season and minimise your costs in the poorer season. But actually looking after the animal health, to me, is a key to remaining profitable. The three things for us that are the most important is fertility, growth and wool production. And I think those three things together are going to be an exciting future for our merino sheep. They'll be very competitive with other enterprises, with cropping and with the other terminal and crossbred breeding enterprises. So really for me it's about breeding a sheep that actually is the most profitable you can do.